Hi Trader, this is Chris from Elite Currency with another video on the Fibonacci series, this time part 9 where we take a look at the fractal indicator with Fibonacci swings. First of all, though, be aware that trading for exchange at Global Financial Markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This video is for educational and informational purposes only, and by continuing watching this video, you agree with this disclaimer. So, of course, as you know, establishing the correct or best swing high and swing low is an essential task of the Fibonacci trader because it determines entry levels, exits, invalidation levels, and stop loss levels, something we will discuss very soon. Now, the fractal indicator is a great tool as well. First of all, the fractal are those green, those, those basically those roofs here that you see indicated by the green boxes. All of these mini arrows, in a way, are fractals. Now, the fractal you'll get on the chart when two candles to the left and two candles to the right are lower or higher. The fractal will be on the bottom if the candle low is the lowest of two to the left and two to the right. Or in other words, the candle low is the lowest of five candles, a group of five. The opposite is true for an upside candle, upside fractal. The fractal basically is the highest high of a group of five with two candles to the left and two candles to the right. So basically this one right in here, right, that candle high is higher than the two candles to the left and the two candles to the right. Now the two to the right and two to the left is the minimum, and there could be a lot more than that, all right? So how can we use these fractals, basically? Well, the Fibonacci and fractal allows us to draw from fractal to fractal, so it's a very simple way of understanding, okay, I am going to draw the fractal, the fib from here to here, from this fractal to this fractal. It makes things a lot simpler. So we can see here, for instance, on the left, the purple one, Fractal to fractal, orange from fractal to fractal, green, and etc. And all of these fibs, as you can see, do pretty well because price is in this uptrend, and of course, uh, that's the way to fib it. If we do it the other way around, obviously, it wouldn't do as well. If we fib it from this top to this bottom, that fib will not really work because price breaks the top and continues with the trend. So we're looking always to trade with the trend, obviously, but then once we've concluded that it's an uptrend, we can easily use these fractals to place it from bottom to top, and in the downtrend, from top to bottom. The exception to that, actually, of course, is when there is a potential reversal, a potential ABC zigzag, for instance, a bigger correction that could take place, and they do occasionally happen, of course. For instance, here we have the dark red line here indicating divergence, that's a good signal, and then some momentum coming in at the market right here with these few red candles. We get a hook back, and then boom, a down move to the target. So in that case, of course, using the FIB on the very first momentum makes sense because in this case, here is that chance for a bigger correction and uh, we could see the trend correct. So that's in a case where we can use the FIB from fractal to fractal in the opposite direction of the trend. Other cases, like here for instance, right, it leads to nothing and leads to a loss because price breaks above it. Better instead when there's no divergence or no signs of reversal to do use this fib and to wait basically for the retracement down to any of these fibs and you can see that using these fractals are just a very simple way of placing the fib there are some dangers that you have to be aware of placing the fib too often in one same area is is not so good for instance the green fib is a great fib but if we start fibbing uh, too many or placing too many fibs on the chart within that green fib then it's getting too chaotic and also the chances of the FIB failing are increasing. We want to wait for an area where a price actually continues and breaks to the next level before placing a new FIB. You can see that this orange FIB still worked, all right, and it's totally engulfed by the green FIB, by the way, that's one sign that we're placing too many FIBs. But the next one, this one, totally failed and actually price went back to the 61.8 of the green FIB. So that's something we want to be careful of, not fibbing too many times. The second issue is that, you know, the fractals are great, but sometimes they appear too late. In this case, where I have the blue boxes here, you can see those are two great fractals, all right? But before we get the other fractal here, the support fractal, price has already moved up and broken this top. So in this regard, we never really got the retracement and just keep moving up and up. So those things do happen. Most of the time, the fractals are great. Sometimes, though, price is just so powerful that uh, it will not give the retrace, and we'll see a fractal already 
basically being broken before we know it. So those are the things that to keep in mind. Join our five part free webinar series over the five weeks spread from beginning of the August, uh, no, mid-August, excuse me, up to end of September. Hope to see you then. Write to info at elitecurrency.com to book your seat. Wish you good trading and talk to you soon. Cheers.